This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream, home to over 2,500 documentaries and nonfiction titles for curious minds. On this channel, we've seen how weird physics can get when we move away from Euclidean space. How strange the universe would appear to us if we lived on a curved hypersphere, or in hyperbolic space for example, since beams of light would behave differently. But we're soon going to see how refining our understanding of the word distance and moving away from Euclidean distance can be extremely applicable within digital communications, space-time, chess, and solving crime, just to name a few examples. If I asked you what is the distance from the origin to the point 3 comma 4, most of you would say 5. And what you're doing is using the Pythagorean theorem to find the straight line or Euclidean distance from one point to another. But let me just change the background here to a map instead of an xy plane. Now what if you were asked the distance from one home or location to another? You could say the straight line distance, but in reality if you were asked this question it's most likely because someone is trying to estimate travel time and how far they'll have to drive. Thus, a direct path would not be useful, and that's definitely not how Google Maps works, for example. Instead, the useful distance would be the shortest path using streets. And in this case, this more useful distance, I'll call it D maps for now, I don't know, is greater than the Euclidean distance. They're not the same, but both seem like valid distances just depending on the situation. So it seems like there's some flexibility in how we define distance. But can we keep going? Well, here's a chessboard. Now, what would you say is the distance between this square and this one? And remember, we're being loose with the word distance. Just what would you find to be most helpful? For me, I need more information. If we're talking about chess specifically, then I'd want to know which piece this is in reference to. If it's the king, then I might say the distance between these two spots is 2, because at the minimum I could get from point A to point B in 1, 2 turns. So distance is 2. For a knight, the distance could be 1. And for a rook, 2. Could also 1, 2 turns. But someone else might come in and say, no, the distance for a rook is 3, because they define it as 1, 2, 3 tiles the rook has to move over, assuming it can't jump tiles, until it lands on that last one. That same person would say the distance from this point to this one for the rook is 7, since that's how many squares it will move over. I don't find that super helpful for the rook, but still, however someone defines distance, it's fair to ask, who's correct? Is anyone correct? And how much flexibility do we have here? Well, we're going to give some requirements that must be met in order for a function to be defined as a distance function. As in all of these examples I just showed, the distance between any two points, a and b, which I'll write as d, a comma b, was positive or zero. No negatives. And it was zero if and only if the two points were the same point. The distance between two different houses cannot be zero, and the distance from a house to itself can only be zero. So this is a fair requirement. Then we need the distances to be symmetric. The distance from A to B has to be the same as the distance from B to A. This is actually not always true for Google Maps, but in general and for where I'm going with all of this, the symmetry requirement does have to be met. Then lastly, this one is important. The distance from A to B must be less than or equal to the distance from A to some random point C plus the distance from that point C to B. This is obvious with Euclidean distance. The distance from A to B here is going to be less than or equal to the distance from A to some other point C plus the distance from C to B. Now you can also see why this is called the triangle inequality. Essentially it says taking a detour must increase the distance or keep it the same. If C were to be on that line segment, then the distance would not change, but it definitely can't go down. As a side note, you can have situations where the Euclidean distance increases, but other distances do not. In chess, if I say the distance from point A to point B for a king is 6, for the 6 moves it takes to get there, 
If instead the king takes a detour and goes to some point C first, the total distance or number of moves could, like in this situation, remain the same. It's one, two, three, four, five, six moves. Euclidean distance went up, but chess distance, I'll call it, stayed the same. But neither went down, so the triangle inequality holds for both types of distances. Anyways, going back, the 2D distance formula we learn in school that calculates Euclidean distance between two points satisfies all these requirements. It's a function that takes in two points from the xy plane, spits out a number that's positive or zero, it's zero if and only if the points are the same, it's definitely symmetric, switching the points doesn't change the output, and as we just saw, the triangle inequality holds. Now this is simply a function with two inputs. But when a function satisfies all of these requirements, we give it a new name, and that is a metric. A metric defines the distance between two points in a more general sense. This here is the Euclidean metric, but as we're about to see, there are several other metrics out there. And any set, like the set of all points in the xy plane, along with a valid metric, is called a metric space. So however you define distance for any set, whether it be a map, a chessboard, or whatever, you just need to check whether these are satisfied for any pair of points. If so, then you have, I won't say a valid distance anymore, but instead a valid metric. Let's see what other metrics we can find though. What if I take the xy plane and define the distance between any two points to be the positive difference in their x-coordinates plus the positive difference in their y-coordinates? As if you were forced to travel this path instead of diagonally for whatever reason. So my distance function would be this here, where the current distance is 4. And the question is, is this a metric? Well, we just gotta check each requirement. The distance will be only positive or zero, since we have those absolute values. If the two points are the same, then distance will be zero, and that's the only way it can be zero, so this is satisfied. It's symmetric also due to the absolute values. Flip these and you get no difference. And let's see, for the triangle inequality, if I put a point C somewhere, like here at 2 comma 2, the distance from A to C will be the difference in X coordinates, or 1, plus the difference in Y coordinates, another 1, for a total of 2. Then C to B will be another 2, based on our definition of distance. So the total distance stayed the same with the detour, which is totally fine. I'm not rigorously proving this here, but you'll find the distance definitely cannot go down, so the triangle inequality holds. Thus we have another metric. This is known as the taxicab metric, or also the Manhattan distance. Because in an area like Manhattan, where the streets are often grids like this, if you want to go from one intersection to another, there's a good chance the distance of that shortest route is going to match the distance given by the taxicab metric. But for a real-world application of this metric, look no further than a video I made a while back on the mathematics used to solve crime. In that video, we saw a scary-looking formula known as Rosmo's formula, which, yes, has been used to catch real criminals. The inputs of this equation include locations of where crimes have been committed by some repeat offender, and the equation outputs probabilities of where that criminal is likely to live you get this heat map of probabilities, which is generated based on the fact that criminals don't commit crimes super close to where they live, but also they don't usually go too far away. The distance between a crime location and a certain potential house location is calculated using the taxicab metric. Euclidean distance is not used, likely because actual distance traveled is better estimated by the Manhattan distance. And here in the formula, you can see that metric showing up in the denominators. And if you want a further breakdown of this equation, I'll post that link below. Then something interesting to think about with non-Euclidean metrics is the set of all points that are a distance of 1 away from the origin. Using the taxicab metric, the point 1, 0 is a distance of 1 away from the origin. 
So is 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5, 0 0.3 comma 0.7, or negative 0.3 comma 0.7. It's simply all the points where the magnitude of the x plus the magnitude of the y values is 1. Which gives us a diamond. This is the quote unquote unit circle when living in taxicab metric space. Now would you say the following is a metric? Instead of defining distance as the sum of those positive differences in x and y values we just saw, distance will be the minimum of those two values. So like right now, the distance between these two points is two. Because of those two coordinate differences, the smaller one is two. If I move this coordinate down a little bit, the minimum is still two, and therefore, so is the distance. Once the positive difference in y values drops below two, then the distance matches that. So would this be a metric? Well, it actually is not. Because when the two points have the same y value, or x value, then the distance is zero. As in the distance between two different points can be zero. And that means the second requirement fails. So this is not a metric. But if we switch min to max, then this is a metric. I won't go through the requirements this time, they're all met. But the distance now, for example, is two, the max of those differences. And that stays true as we move up until we pass 3 comma 3. Then the distance follows the difference in y values. This is known as the maximum metric and it has an interesting application in chess. This is the metric used to find how many moves it will take for the king to go from some square to another. So what we were doing before was valid. All we gotta do to find that distance, or the number of moves, is calculate the difference in the x and y coordinates, assuming adjacent squares are one away from each other, then take the maximum, which would be 5 in this case. And that means it'll take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 moves at the minimum. Then you can further apply this information to the situation of a king trying to catch a pawn before it turns into a queen, for example. Sorry, pretend the pawn and king are different colors here. But if the pawn is going this way, and it's your turn as the king, to determine whether you'll be able to catch the pawn, draw a line from the pawn to the end of the board, and make a square with that as the side lengths, and the pawn in the corner. If the king is able to enter that square, or reach the blue on its turn, then it will be able to catch the pawn. Okay, so now you can see if someone asks you for the distance from the origin to 3, 4, it really depends on the metric. The Euclidean distance is 5, using the taxicab metric it's 7, and the maximum metric is 4. But metrics can get uh, even weirder. If I decided to say the distance between any two points is 1, unless the points are the same, then the distance is 0. So we can write the function like this. It turns out this is a metric. It satisfies all the requirements, and this is known as the discrete metric. If you wanted the set of points that are less than a distance of one away from the origin, for example, you'd only have the origin itself, a single point, since everything else is a distance of one away. And this shows that there are infinitely many metrics, since you can replace one with any positive number and this will still work. Now, there are a lot of applicable metrics out there, but something important to note is that the metric space doesn't have to include coordinates or locations. It can be a set of anything, like the set of all three letter words. Yes, we can define a metric for this set, and amazingly, this does have applications. We're gonna define the distance between any two elements to be the number of letters that need to be flipped in order for the words to match. So the distance from cat to hat is 1, because you have to change one letter to make the words match. But cat to dog is a distance of 3. You gotta flip all three letters. Now, is this a valid metric? Well, the distance can't be negative, and it's definitely only 0 if the words are the same. It's symmetric, since if the distance one way is 1, then going backwards will also be 1. You gotta flip one letter. 
And then what if we take a detour? Go from cat to can to hat. Well, cat to can is a distance of one. You gotta flip the T to an N. Then can to hat is a distance of two. You need to flip the C and the N. So the total distance went from one up to three. Or what if we do cat to caught to dog? Then the detour has a total distance of one plus two for a total of three, meaning it did not change. But this is all that can happen. The distance cannot go down. So the triangle inequality also holds and this is a metric. Now flipping around three letter words may not seem applicable, but when you change these to binary strings, then it is. When you define distance just like we did, the number of bits that need to be flipped for the strings to match, then we have what is called the Hamming distance. This is used in information theory and error detection as it tells you how different two binary strings are, or how many errors need to be corrected for one string to match another. Something I've mentioned before that I find really interesting is that you can use a cube to find this distance. If you label the vertices as shown, then the distance can be calculated by counting edges that need to be traversed to go from one string to another. For example, the distance between 101 and 011 we know is 2, because it takes one, two edges to go from one to the other. And when you move up to 4-bit strings, you can use the vertices of a hypercube to determine those distances. So yeah, amazingly, metrics and higher dimensional shapes can be used to solve problems within digital communications. And while metrics are used to define the distance between two points in space, as we've seen, they can also be used to define the distance between two events in space-time. So metrics, as you can expect, are extremely important when dealing with relativity. I briefly introduced the idea of a metric tensor in another video, though, so I'll link that below for those who want to know more. If you want to really dive deep into metric tensors, then you can check out the Lumberjack Feynman lectures here on YouTube. But to get a more high-level understanding of relativity and cosmology, you can check out CuriosityStream, the sponsor of this video. What you're seeing here is one episode from their series called Parallel Universes, which explores higher dimensions, what's so special about the 11 dimensions of M-theory, how black holes might lead to parallel universes, and several other mind-blowing topics. Or they have a series of documentaries taught by Stephen Hawking, such as Genius, which talks about big ideas like time travel and why we exist. So if you're a math and science enthusiast, you will not be disappointed by what they have to offer, which includes not just physics and the universe, but technology and engineering, crime and forensics, history, and more. The service is available on a variety of platforms worldwide, and the pricing only comes out to $2.99 per month, but if you sign up by clicking the link below and using the promo code ZACKSTAR, you'll get your first month's membership completely free. So no risk in just giving it a try. And with that, you'll have unlimited access to top documentaries and nonfiction titles that I know you guys will enjoy. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.